Hi, I'm Steve Thomas. This is Cacophony. Let's dive into some great music as we enter a world in miniature. There are two loose composer groupings with names that are numbers. In the mid to late 19th century, there was the Five, or the Mighty Handful, young Russian composers who were trying to carve out, create, a national style of music. And then some young French composers came along in the 1920s, and with great imagination, and a distinct nod back in the Russians' direction, became known as Les Six. Musically, they weren't that united, at least initially. They were as much friends and drinking partners as anything. Like the five, some of the six are famous, and some of them have become footnotes to musical history, whose names you might want to collect for tricky pub or TV quizzes, like early members of the Beatles, or UK Prime Ministers of 2022. And those names are, the famous ones still aren't really household names, but they're famous composers, Arthur Honegger, Francis Poulenc, Darius Mio, and the others, Germaine Taifair, Georges Auric, and Louis Duray. So here's the thing. Like any good music trivia collector, I had these names vaguely in the dark recesses of my brain somewhere. But it was only a couple of years ago that I came to find out that one of their number, Germaine Taifair, was a woman. And of course, Her being a woman isn't something that should be a standout point, and in and of itself there's no reason why the good people on the BBC or wherever I'd heard the names listed should have drawn my attention to it. It's just that at no time in the previous 20 years or so had it occurred to me that any of the composers of Lysis wouldn't be a man. So if you're wondering why I now make such a big thing about female composers, it's because there's still so much work to do to normalise the fact that women do write music and always have written music, and that it's every bit as worthy of our attention as that written by men. I wanted to bring you a big orchestral piece from early in her career, the 20s and 30s, when the Paris scene was attracting all the world's artists and musicians, and Les Cis were a big thing. That would tie in nicely with Cacophony's recent episodes featuring French great Claude Debussy and the Paris sensation Igor Stravinsky. Perhaps a 1923 ballet, The Bird Cellar. But, as so often with female composers who aren't still alive, there's no proper recording. I have instead been captivated by this little suite for orchestra, from later in her life in the mid-fifties. Typhair was active as a composer from 1909, with lots of early success. But her career was stunted by not one but two jealous and abusive husbands who didn't want her composing much as her father had been totally against her studying music in the first place. Her first husband was a famous and wealthy cartoonist who took her to America, where Charlie Chaplin wanted her to go to Hollywood and write for his films. But there was only room for one successful person in her marriage, and in any case, she pointed out to Chaplin that he was talented enough to write his own music. And he did. It was only once she was separated and then divorced from her second husband that things really got going, and much of her subsequent work was for film, TV and radio back in France. It's perhaps the case that the music from the little suite was destined for a film. Typhair had been commissioned to write the score for The Lift to the Gallows, but one night in Paris the jazz musician Miles Davis happened by the studio. The director showed him the rough cut of the film, and Davis improvised music on the spot, which happened to be recorded, and happened to become the soundtrack. As I said, I've been totally captivated by this little suite. It's not on CD anywhere, so there are no streaming options today. But there's a really good performance on YouTube, from the Orchestra of Radio France and their conductor Mikko Frank, who's relishing every minute. And it's less than seven minutes of music in three movements, that still manages to pack a load in. At the beginning, there are hints, well, more than hints, of Debussyan Eastern influence. And a dark corner which flips into this charming, delightful tune, with accompaniment on Celeste, bells played by a keyboard, that makes the whole thing feel like it's coming from a delicate music box. 
Words like charming and delightful are the stock phrases of easy listening classical music radio, and they often get used for anything that won't cause alarm or unsettle the listener. So I tend not to use them, but here I mean it. It's charming, delightful, with a kind of innocent joy. There's a lovely moment for the trumpet, with an almost Mexican mariachi vibe. Look out for the discreet in-concert applause from the horn player sitting next to him. And shortly after, it's gone, disappearing into a musical puff of smoke. Magic. I try not to compare composers, but I mean the highest praise in saying that the middle movement of Ty Fair's Little Suite sounds like it might be a missing chunk of Maurice Ravel's Mother Goose, which is one of the most wonderful pieces ever written. If I have any criticism of Mother Goose, it's that there's not enough of it, so it's great to hear something else in the same vein. This is wonderful, a miniature unspoken fairy tale, lovely and lyrical on the surface, with an undercurrent of deeper feelings. And then to finish, Ty Fair ends with a brief folk song, Les Filles de la Rochelle, which brings things to a joyous and slightly abrupt end. It's a mere seven minutes of nearly carefree, innocent delight from a composer whose often happy music belied the challenges she faced in life. In many ways, happy music was her escape. So let's enjoy a few carefree moments and have a listen. Click on the link in the podcast show notes for this performance of Germaine Taifair's Little Sweet for Orchestra. And then tell me what you think. You can leave me a nice and easy voice message or send us a comment at cacophonyonline.com. I reckon you must know someone who would enjoy this Thai Fair piece or the Cacophony podcast. Who are they? Please share the podcast directly with them, but also splurge it all over your social media. If you'd like to support Cacophony financially, you can. There's a link to coffee.com where you can make a one-off or regular contribution. Anything would be very gratefully received. But most importantly, come back for more next time, and thanks for listening.